While America's plans for a manned space station were still at computer stage, high over Earth, another orbiter had been busy for years, a workshop in the sky. It was the Soviet station, Mir. The word meant peace. A complex assembled module by module since 1986. Crews commuted to Mir by Soyuz ferry. Foreigners participated. There were lucrative commercial contracts. A link up with the American space shuttle was planned. Mir was so successful, it survived the demise of the Soviet Union. Less fortunate was the Soviet version of space shuttle, Buran. Pictured here on the back of the world's most powerful rocket, Energia, Buran flew by remote control. Lifted into orbit by Energia, Buran had one unmanned flight and a doubtful future. Russian ambitions could now lie with the projected European shuttle, Hermes, here with its mini space station, Columbia Free Flyer. A joint venture with the European Space Agency is a possibility. The Japanese are also interested in a manned mini shuttle. But the Europeans' biggest push will continue with Ariane. This is Ariane 5, planned as the world's most efficient launcher, capitalizing on an unrivaled record in the deployment of heavy satellites. Ariane 5 should keep the Europeans ahead of commercial rivals in America, Russia and China. Space Shuttle will remain America's orbital workhorse. In the late 90s, it'll help construct the great space station, Freedom. Freedom is still being planned, but it should look something like this. A collection of bolt-on modules, American, Japanese, European, even Russian. An orbiting United Nations, courtesy of NASA. Shuttle will be invaluable, but possibly too small to ferry the heaviest parts aloft. Freedom will be permanently manned, at once a research laboratory and a platform from which to launch missions to the moon. Shuttle, however, will be eventually phased out, at least as presently designed. The trouble with shuttle is capacity. It's a taxi rather than a truck, and a costly taxi at that, adequate for carrying small payloads into orbit or launching modestly ambitious probes. But for powerful shots to the outer planets, NASA must rely on rockets like Titan IV. This could be the next shuttle. A hybrid, half aircraft, half spacecraft. A space plane that could travel from New York to Australia in 45 minutes, or from airport to spaceport in less than half an hour. The technology exists. Indeed, the US military possibly has a smaller version. For the time being, though, NASA is constrained by development and production costs. Sooner or later, Super Shuttle will happen, probably early next century. And towards the end of the 21st century, 
such hybrids could be joyriding through the friction of the upper atmosphere. Tourist excursions heading for leisure wheels in the sky. A weekend break, watching the earth below and heavens above. It's science fiction, but as technology advances, there's every possibility of space cities in permanent Earth orbit. Slowly rotating wheels offering visitors a touch of homely gravity. A more immediate prospect is a manned return to the moon, last visited in 1972. How much easier to land in the first decade of the 21st century. And with old rivalries buried, NASA hopes for an international effort. A lunar base would be established. With shuttle as a kickstart, NASA has longer term plans for manned missions to Mars. Technologically, they're already feasible. Cost is the problem. Initially, there'd be a touchdown on the tiny Martian moon of Phobos. There, astronauts would set up a sort of base camp. Meanwhile, using the thin Martian atmosphere as a break, a lander would descend to the red planet itself. An enormous enterprise. The round trip from Earth to Mars and back would take two years and vast resources. The objective would be a permanent Martian presence. The priority to erect airtight shelters for Mars is cold and arid, its atmosphere unbreathable. Complete with oxygen backpacks, explorers would wear pressurized suits and drive Martian rovers. They'd search for water, possibly trapped as ice beneath the surface. Water would be a boon. Oxygen could be extracted for breathing supplies, hydrogen to fuel the rovers. Every scientific device would be employed to establish self-sustaining colonies. After all, the nearest supplies would be a year away on Earth. NASA, no doubt, will send manned expeditions elsewhere within the inner planets. The outer solar system will remain the preserve of robots. When the robot Galileo slops into orbit around Jupiter in December 1995, it'll have been heading from Earth for six years, a journey too far in conditions too harsh for anything but a mechanical explorer. A little later, another mission best left to a robot. A one-way ticket to investigate a comet. And shortly after the turn of the century, a rendezvous with Saturn by the orbiter Cassini, another odyssey unlikely as a manned flight. Beyond the planets, where even robots can't reach, instruments like Space Telescope must probe and explore an eye on the cosmos for flights to the stars. Next time in Encyclopedia Galactica, we look at the machines which can reach the parts of the galaxy that other space explorers can't. The robot explorers being prepared for missions to Mars. Cassini, the craft which will visit Saturn and its moon Titan. We also look through the world's most powerful telescopes next time in Encyclopedia Galactica.